Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly video for you of this little guy here. Oh wait, no, that's a huge guy. It's the Spyderco K2, uh, designed by Fareed Mare. Before I go too much further though, of course, Spyderco's warranty technically does not allow you to disassemble the knife, which is not a brilliant thing, but it is what it is. Um, you know, they usually they can't tell, and if you do it right, they can't tell at all but it is something you have to fight. And so let's just keep that in mind. This is a knife that I bought uh, because it went on sale recently and it's absolutely insane. Um, you know, it's it's a huge, huge knife. And out of the box, it's very, very murdery. Um, the tip on this guy is usually more upswept, but I actually ground down the tip a little bit. And I'll show that in the full review just to make it so I like the knife a little bit better. But in the process, um, you know, anytime you're using a uh, grinder or sandpaper, you get some grit in the pivot. So it's time for me to clean this guy out a little bit. Using Torx here, T8. Go ahead and undo this bottom part. Not a lot of Loctite, if there's any at all. So that's nice. Thank you, Spyderco, for not making my life hell in that way. Looks like a little bit of white thread locker, whatever that is. And he is hoping. Yeah, beautiful. Came right apart. Thank you, Spyderco. I appreciate your service in making that not a pain in my neck. These two screws look to be... I believe these are the same screw, but I'm not going to play with it. I'm going to put your pivot screw over here, and I'm going to put your non-pivot screw over here. And with that, the knife is disassembled. There we go, and it popped apart. Whoa. Well, it's kind of self-disassembling. That's neat, right? So, uh, here we go. We can see that this is a very simple knife. This isn't going to be a long video at all. Um, all that we've got here are titanium slabs. We've got ourselves a uh, backspacer. We've got ourselves a pair of bronze washers. Thank you for using bronze rather than Teflon beautiful and they seem to be nicely polished as well or at least i mean not polished polished but then they're, they're, they're doing fine and we got ourselves a uh, lock bar here no sign of carbonization sometimes that creates a rougher surface but who knows actually wait yeah you can see they've done something here hopefully you can see that but either way um the lock bar is there and this unfortunately is a knife that suffers from, from pretty serious lock stick uh, a lot of people talk about it, and in fact, I'll be talking about it a little bit in my review. It's actually not as bad as the Spyderco Nirvana was, but it's still up there. Uh, so go ahead and wipe off the, uh, the washers here. A little bit of gunk, a little bit of dirt. A lot of Sharpie here. I use Sharpie sometimes on a knife when uh, I'm dealing with lock stick, just because it tends to make it a little bit nicer... Uh, it provides kind of a, a meta material to make that coupling a little easier to break. I don't think it's a problem in a knife that locks up as much as this guy does. Ah, uh, well, I'm giving you the little tour here. We have an over-travel stop, which is, ah, pardon me, mounted on the inside, which I like a lot because not only is it a little more subtle this way, that went the lanyard do, whatever, but um, it's a little more subtle, but on this knife, that is actually something I feel is necessary. Because the lock bar is so long, it's very easy to get a lot of leverage on this guy very quickly. And if there wasn't that over-travel stop, I can see, especially with the lock stick on this guy, it being very easy to overextend the lock bar. And that just... Nah, nah, that's scary to me. And so I do appreciate the fact that they included the stabilizer here. Even when I, most of the time in my reviews, I say it's got a lock bar stabilizer, but you know, it don't really need it. So anyways, there you go. And then there's also this kind of thing, which is one of the weird design elements here. It's got like a bead almost going on as a backspacer. It's maybe that's a Fareed Mare thing. Maybe it's just something specific to this knife, but whatever it is, it's honestly a little strange. And uh, so I'm not, you know, it's not a problem. It's unique. But uh, there you go. The other thing is it came with some kind of gunk right on the on the titanium there. And I'm hoping that the, uh, the booze here will cut it out. But it may need something a little stronger than the booze to get rid of that gunk. No, it's gone. Hey, beautiful. 91% isopropyl alcohol will do a great deal in life. Probably not as profound as I just made it sound. Okay, well, 
I believe we're all set here. So let's put the blade back together. Um, actually, one thing I do want to say, on the lock stick front, there are a couple approaches. You can always use the oxcod antioxidant compound. On knives where it's really bad, I do actually tend to use a sharpie, and this is just a boring sharpie. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to color the entire lock face here with sharpie, even though there's only a small port uh, portion of it that touches the blade. It just, it's nice to give that a coating. And then I'm also, on, on the other side, going to coat the, um, the contact face of the blade here where the lock bar hits with a similarly thick coat of Sharpie. You can redo this one, but it's nice to get both sides. So there you go. Perfect. That'll help a little bit. But like I said, honestly, all the people talking about the lock stick here, yeah, is it great? No, but it's better than the Nirvana was. So she's unfortunately not saying great things about that Nirvana issue. Oh, boy. Okay, and you can also see, by the way, that when they stonewashed the titanium, they left this portion smooth. They protected it so that the washer would spin against a non-stonewashed surface, which is kind of a nice little thing. So, let's start off by pushing the pivot through. You can see there's a little bit of a D-shape to this pivot, so we'll pop it through. Bam. Step one, I'm going to go ahead and apply some of your nano oil here. Uh, it's a 10-weight nano oil here. Drop that down there. Come on now. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and just use the pivot itself to uh, distribute that evenly. Uh, that is the pivot hole to distribute that evenly. Now I'm going to, unfortunately, the, the, the pocket clip makes it a total pain in the neck to set this guy down uh, without the pivot popping through. So I'm going to be fighting that this whole time. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of your nano oil to that surface. Gonna go ahead and drop a washer under here. Perfect. Apply a little bit of oil on the other side of the washer here. Beautiful. And then just use the, uh, the nano oil tip to distribute that oil. Just looking for a thin film there. Don't need to drown it. And I am going to go ahead and use some of the thicker nano oil and just fill this little detent ball hole. That's the 85 weight. That way it slides a little smoother. Perfect. All righty. Now let's drop in a stop pin, shall we? Come on now. You can do it. Don't you want to go home? Perfect. The lockup on this knife out of the box is late. Absolutely late. Like 70%, maybe even 80. Which is impressive. Honestly, and borderline frightening. All right. I'm going to go ahead and drop that on there. Just rotate it a little bit and distribute the oil. You know, a late lockup is one of those things that I feel like I maybe should get more bent out of shape about than I do. Practically speaking, I've never worn out a frame lock, so it's almost academic at some level. But it is something I do think about on occasion. And uh, because this is one of my knives, and because there's not a whole lot of threading here, I am going to go ahead and, and use a little bit of your uh, thread locker here. Blue Loctite. Sometimes it's helpful when you're doing something like this to kind of use the screwdriver to stabilize. There we go. And go ahead and drop that on there and making sure that I've got the pivot screw, which was over here. If you're taking apart something really complex, whether you know there are hundreds and hundreds of parts, sometimes it's useful to actually do your disassembly on a surface you can draw on. Do some butcher paper or something like that. And then just draw a diagram and place things where they should go. It's easier if you've got a magnetic mat or something like that. But magnetic mats are less than ideal in other situations. You don't want to magnetize your parts necessarily. All right, so I've got that cranked way further down than I need to. So let's pop it open. little tiny bit of blade play, so I'll crank this a little further. Oh, yeah, 
yeah. The lock stick here is, it's a thing, sadly. No vertical blade play. There's that late lockup I'm talking about here. That's, that's impressive. But at the same time, this is meant to be a really beefy knife. And so in some ways, I'm happy to forgive late lockup on a blade this big that's meant for harder use. It's going to keep it from popping loose accidentally. <laughs> This is that lock stick. Um, and you can see here that there's already worn off a little bit of the Sharpie. That's the area where the blade contacts the uh, rest of it. And so I'm actually just going to go in there and sketch over. And so every so often in a blade, especially as I'm working through the, uh, through the lock stick in the first few weeks, months, whatever, um, I'll reapply the Sharpie there. And that's much better. See, this time it didn't come off nearly as much. Beautiful. God, that's smooth. Doesn't quite drop shut. Centering's still good. That's nice. Everything else looks fine. So I dare say we have gone on ahead and disassembled the Spyderco K2. Beautiful. That was easy. And, uh, yeah, nice, simple knife. And I appreciate that very much. Yeah, maybe a little bit more ornamentation would be good. And we'll talk about that during the full review, of course. But uh, for the most part, there's a lot of good here. Nice, simple thing. Alrighty, so there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, that you uh, enjoyed the disassembly here, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.